All right, let's get started. Everyone, thank you for joining us. This is the Start Monetizing Your Blog Today panel. And uh, they put three amazing women together for this panel and wanted to talk about some mommy blogging and uh, blogging in general and how to make money for your blog. And then they realized the three women they put on the panel would need somebody to control them. So they brought <laughs> me in as the moderator. And my name is Marty M. Fonke, and uh, I'll be helping to keep these lovely ladies in line today and hopefully this session on time. Um, I'm the president of Fonkin Associates and uh, we're a consulting and project management company and we've generated millions of dollars in revenue for our clients and a lot of that has been through affiliate marketing since about the year 2000. So I've been involved in this space quite a while and it's uh, definitely an honor to be here talking with you all. We have a, a fun session today. Um, I think that uh, if we don't all get a laugh out of here, uh, I'd be very, very surprised. Um, the way this is going to, oh, by the way, take note of the, uh, the uh, Twitter names um, after, the, uh, after everybody's names there. And if somebody says something really profound, feel free to tweet it out there. It really boosts the ladies' egos when you do that, so. <laughs> Uh, the agenda for today, we're going to do, actually the introductions I'm going to do as each person comes up and speaks, so I'm not going to do it all together. We're going to talk a little bit about Affiliate Marketing 101, uh, the stakeholders in blogging and uh, generating revenue through blogging, evaluating merchants, types of creative, the affiliate site, uh, extreme site makeover, resources, contact info, and then for Q&A, we're going to do it a little bit differently than if you've been in some panels already or sessions already today, everybody's kind of done their presentation and then done Q&A at the end. We're going to do a little bit different. We're going to do a Q&A break after each person does their, uh, does their piece. So please take note of your questions for each person and then we'll ask, uh, ask the questions. And uh, Carolyn Tang from Sharesell has brought two huge bags of prizes here. And there's some really cool stuff. So if you ask a question, we'll hit you in the head with, uh, no, she'll bring you a prize as a little thank you for asking your questions of each panelist. So with that, uh, I asked each, everybody saw the bios that are in the program. And uh, so I asked each person to submit a bio that was maybe a, a little bit different than what you would have read in the program. And I asked them to say, tell us something a little bit unique about each one. And so Carolyn submitted uh, a partially boring bio and uh, a partially interesting bio. So Thanks, Marty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the boring. No, I'll read, I'll read it all. Uh, as the director of client services for Sharecell.com, Carolyn Tang is responsible for building solid relationships between affiliates and merchants within the network and for ensuring that the needs of all shareholders are communicated and resolved. Prior to joining Sharecell, Carolyn managed affiliate programs at both Orbitz and CollectiblesToday.com and also helped establish the MyPoint shopping portal during the early internet years. Carolyn holds both an MBA from Loyola University of Chicago and an MSJ from Northwestern University. So that she may maintain her academic street cred, Carol, Carolyn is also an adjunct uh, faculty member with the Loyola University School of Business, imparting words of e-marketing wisdom to unsuspecting undergraduates each year. Now here's the trivia tidbit. She is currently tackling one of the most difficult market segmentation projects in her entire life, wedding planning. And I know that Carolyn last night held her bachelorette party and we are very, very lucky that she is conscious for us to be here on this panel. So please put your hands together and let's welcome Carolyn Chang. I haven't quite gotten through the presentation yet, so you can judge at the end. Um, what I'd like to say just to start off with is that this is an introduction to affiliate marketing, so if, if you're already in it or if you're already doing it, a lot of this might be um, a little easy for you. <laughs> so basically what affiliate marketing is, is merchants are going to partner with third-party entities to get online traffic. Um, this traffic can come anywhere from like websites, um, blogs, incentive sites, community sites, deal sites, um, email marketers, PPC marketers, anything that comes um, from the online space. But you can also now, as I'll show you later on in the presentation, affiliate marketing has expanded beyond that traditional model. So now it's no longer limited to online. Now you can also drive offline traffic as well. Compensation within affiliate marketing is generally performance-based. You'll see a lot of programs that are pay per sale or percentage of sale, or also a pay per lead. 
So that's something that's really going to distinguish affiliate marketing from other channels. So what I'm going to do now is just go over each of the individual stakeholders. Um, and then as you can see from each individual stakeholder that I'll show in the coming slides, we have one representative of that position. So the first stakeholder is the merchant. This is where the consumer is going to complete their action. It's either going to be a purchase or it's going to be filling out a lead form for like a mortgage, anything like that. It's anywhere where the consumer completes an action. Generally, the way that you're going to recognize a, a merchant is because they're the ones that have the shopping cart. The next stakeholder is the affiliate. This is the person responsible for driving traffic to that merchant site. In this example, um, we're showing Shuaholics Anonymous, one of my very favorite bloggers. Um, and she's taking a look at the, she's reviewing strappy sandals, which is very fun. Um, and so what happens is a consumer comes, reads the post, thinks it's very cute, clicks on the link, goes right back to Chinese Laundry at the merchant, completes a purchase at Chinese Laundry. Shuaholics Anonymous is going to get a commission on that sale. So who is responsible for tracking that consumer from Shoeaholics Anonymous to ChineseLaundry.com? That's where the network comes in. I, I work with a network. So what we do is we, we follow the consumer from the blog site or from the PPC search engine, from the email. We follow that consumer all the way over to the merchant site. Shuresale is one of uh, several affiliate networks. And I've actually listed. Um, the major ones here, all of them are at this conference. Um, all of us are very friendly, so definitely feel free to stop by and say hello. So what's more, probably one of the most important questions that I get asked by affiliates is, well, how do you evaluate whether or not the merchant's good to work with? The first thing you want to note, is the merchant um, a solid site with relevant in-stock offerings? There's nothing like driving a consumer to a site where everything's out of stock. There's nothing to buy. You know, the consumer gets bored, your site loses credibility, and you move on. Um, the other thing to look for is positive EPC. EPC stands for earnings per click. And the way it's generally calculated is how much has a merchant paid out in commissions for the past 100 clicks. That number is actually averaged out over a specific time period. Usually, we take a look at a 7-day or a 30-day EPC. Um, you also want to look for a low reversal rate. Um, merchants will back out sales if there's a fraudulent credit card, um, if the consumer decides to return something. That's perfectly legitimate. But if you take a look at a, at a merchant's statistics and it shows that they've been reversing like 80% of their sales, it's probably a little sketchy and you know that that's not a merchant you want to work with. You also want to see a fair number of return days. What a return day is is when the, cons when the affiliate refers a consumer over to the website and that consumer does not make a purchase on their initial visit, the merchant says, well, you know what? You went ahead and you refer that consumer. You know, if the consumer comes back within you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or 120 days, we'll give you credit for that sale. You also want, and this is very important, active and responsive affiliate management. Uh, we've got one of the best OPMs, I, uh, one of the best affiliate managers that I know here, Kristen Kinsey. Um, what they can do for you is they can work with you to tell you like, oh, well, this merchant's going to be good for you. Uh, this merchant's got these products. This is what the seasonality is like. These are what the best sellers are. And they can kind of guide and help you shape your marketing efforts as well. So now we'll just quickly go over the different types of creative. Um, and then when Trisha speaks, you'll actually see a lot of this in play on an, an actual affiliate site. Traditionally, affiliate marketing uh, uses standard banner creative. Um, product images, logos, all that good stuff. That's how it all started. But now we've gotten a lot further. Now we also have dynamic interactive banners. So what you see here is what's called a widget. The consumer can click on either one of those tabs and find information. It's also more informative because we've discovered that um, consumers who are pre-sold with information are more likely to trust the merchant site once they click through from this banner creative. We also see a video now. Um, ShareSale actually has a neat way where not only do we provide you video from our merchants that they provide to us, but you can also create your own video. So one of our merchants is La Prima Shops. They sell a lot of kitchen gadgets and stuff. You go, to, you go to his affiliate program, and he'll have an instructional video on how to use an avocado peeler. So that's one video that you could put up on your site. But another way to do it is like, let's say that you have a food blog, and you wanted to show people how to make guacamole. Um, you're going to use, like, say, a couple, of, uh, a couple of kitchen items. You're going to use an avocado slicer, and you're going to use a vegetable peeler. What you can do is when you record that, as soon as you're actually using the tool, a sidebar can slide out from that video player and have a link 
that goes from your video over to the avocado slicer. And then when you switch to using the vegetable peeler, your link can actually swap itself out and then direct the consumer to that vegetable peeler as well. So now you're able to drive the consumer deeper into the site and provide value-added content that you guys create. Another type of uh, creative that is, is a product data feed. It's very simple. What it is, if you can imagine in your head an Excel spreadsheet, every single row is a product. Every single column is one characteristic of that product. So you're going to have product name, product landing page, image URL, anything like that. Affiliates can actually take this and use it to generate new sites. They can pull it into uh, any kind of tool like Web Merge and then have it spit out all the code for each of these product pages. But the other benefit of this is that now you're driving the consumer deeper into the merchant's site. And we all know that the fewer clicks a consumer takes, um, the higher the likelihood of conversion is. Now this is the part that is actually very fun now. Now we're taking affiliate marketing completely offline. You're no longer limited to doing it on your blog. Um, now we're actually able to track phone calls. So if you send a consumer to call a merchant's phone, uh, call center, you're going to actually make money for every single call that you send over to that merchant. The reason why the merchants like this is they know as soon as they get somebody on the phone, there's a live salesperson who's going to be able to make the pitch. They're going to more, it's going to be a higher conversion rate. I'm causing a lot of feedback. Sorry about that. Um, and so that's, that's how this works. So now affiliates are able to take out billboard ads. You can take out newspaper ads, Craigslist ads, anywhere that you can put a phone number, and we can actually track that all for you. All right, so do you guys have any questions? I've got t-shirts. <laughs> um, if we do have questions, just raise your hand, and we want to make sure that when you ask the question, you either go up to the microphone that's right over here or have one here, we can run out to you. We are recording these sessions, so we want to make sure we get all the, the questions on the audio recording. So if there's no, do we have a question for Carolyn? Okay, please uh, stand up and run this out to you. Yeah, still won't get recorded. There we go. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, Carolyn, for the, um, uh, the affiliate uh, system that sends the video to the affiliate um, mm -hmm. website, does that work like just Google Ads that every time you refresh the screen, another video would be uh, where, where that code goes on, on the web page? No, but that's a great idea, and we'll probably work on that. Um, what you do currently is that you just pick which video you want and then place that so it's like a static video on that page. And what goes into the decision-making process? So let's say you're, it's shoes. Well, do I want, I, and I've got three spots on my web page for you know, box ads and okay. one spot for a video ad. How would I know, or is that up to the affiliate manager to make recommendations? Hey, this ad for your site would go better on video, or no, use that company as one of your merchants, but use it as the big box. Is that something that, that you would provide? or? Uh, yeah, you can ask an affiliate manager what they think the best creative would be for your site, and the affiliate manager can give their opinion, but it's the affiliates can make their own mind up as to what gets placed where. And for the video itself, is, is there like big box ads and banner ads, there's you know, industry standard sizes. On video, does, does YouTube just shrink it to what my size actually, is? Yeah, actually, um, the way that shares, so we don't use the YouTube player, we actually use an unbranded, um, just an unbranded standard video player. The merchant actually gets to select the size. Generally, I think it's about 300 by 500 about. Okay, but if, if my video space is smaller on the page, okay. You, you'll adapt it for that? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, okay. if, you just, if you ask the merchants, like, again, if, if the pro affiliate program is being run by a good manager, they will have no problem resizing that oh. for you at all. Okay. Well, thank you very much for all your answers. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Any other questions? Okay, great. There's one over there. Oh, did we have Do you want to stand up over at that microphone right there? It's close to you. Hi, Carolyn. It's good to see you again. Yeah, all right, <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, I know we're trying to drive traffic to the merchant and get a sale, but what's the possibility of getting a, a, a 
carbon copy of the sale to you as, a, as an affiliate to this way? Is that negotiable or not? Um, actually, it, it sort of is. You're not going to get any specific consumer information because of privacy, but with ShareASale, if the merchant opts to, they can actually provide you product level information. Um, I know that's possible with ShareASale. I don't know about the other networks so much, but yeah. So you can maybe like help your business grow because you can see this customer and try to get that customer to come back again and stuff like that? Actually, you know what? It is possible. If you, are, if you have a membership base, for example, um, there is a way where you can adapt a tracking link on any network, I suppose, to pass along that member ID so that when you look at your transaction report, it is tied to your member ID. Okay. All right. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to the next, the next segment from the affiliate, and we're going to hear from Tricia Meyer. On the outside, Tricia is a lawyer turned affiliate marketer who bakes cookies and serves as PTA president. In reality, she has recently become fascinated by vampire and werewolf stories. She's addicted to both TMZ and the Disney Channel, and she enjoys launching pop culture niche sites for fun. Let's hear it for Tricia. All right, so Marty said niche. How many of you say niche? All right, yeah, I don't know what it is. I put it in there because that's what it's supposed to say, but honestly, I don't really know. Niche, niche, niche. We won't mention it again through the rest of the presentation, but that's just what it's going to be. Um, as you can see, the site that we're going to be talking about is my buytwilightstuff.com. Now, I know 10% of you just moved up to the edge of your chairs and got really excited, and the other 90% took out your iPhones to play Bejeweled. But stick with me, because the point of all of this is, as Marty said, that you can basically take anything that you're interested in and turn it into a blog site. All right. The reason that I decided to use the Buy Twilight site, um, one of the reasons is because it is a really basic site. As you can see, this is just a standard WordPress blog with a very um, basic theme put on top of it. It's nothing fancy, but it's probably the best performing blog that I have. Another reason I wanted to use it is just because I can show you a lot of different ways to monetize using affiliate marketing all on the same site. This site is truly what I would consider to be a monetized blog. This is not a blog where I have a lot of personal followers. This is a blog where I am trying to sell things. Um, so you have to kind of think about that in terms of your own audience, whether you're building a membership base of people that are coming back to you because they want to buy merchandise and it's okay to push that merchandise to them frequently, or whether it's a site where you don't want to put quite so many ads on there. Google AdSense. How many of you are currently using Google AdSense on some kind of blog site? I think a lot of people start with Google AdSense because it's easy, it's customizable. Um, as you see, I have it over on the right side of this particular page, but you could also have it within each of your posts if you wanted to. And if, for those of you who aren't using Google AdSense, just basically the benefits of using it are that you're going to be able to put something on your site that may not necessarily look like an advertisement. It's not going to jump out at you like a banner ad is if you choose for it to be text-based. And it's also going to pick up what's on your site. So you can see with mine that it's picked up that this is a Twilight site and it's always going to have advertisements over there that are targeted toward Twilight fans. Um, one of the downsides though to using Google AdSense is that you might be driving traffic just to another affiliate site. So there might be, that advertisement over there might be twilightmoviestore.com. And all I'm doing is getting paid, you know, 25, 50 cents a dollar to send people there. And then they go to that site and they buy the same things that I'm selling, but they may make $10 or $20 off of the sale. So you are getting paid for every click that you're sending, but you may be losing out on bigger commissions. So that's something to think about with the AdSense. Once you start into the actual affiliate marketing, that step past AdSense, I think most people tend to start with the standard banners. And the first thing that you're going to have to do, obviously, is find banners that fit your content. So you're going to need to go into the networks, whichever networks you've applied for, and look for merchants that overall fit what the theme of your website is. Um, I have on this particular site, you can see I've got a couple of different banners on the different sides that both fit with my Twilight theme. And on the left side, I'm using a Hot Topic banner. The reason I'm using just the small Hot Topic banner the way that I am is because Twilight fans know Hot Topic. 
I don't need to show them the Hot Topic merchandise. Twilight fans know the brand, Hot Topic. And if they want to buy something, they see that, that Hot Topic has new Twilight merchandise, they're going to click on that. But on the right side, how many of you ever heard of customizedgirl.com? Yeah, like three of you. Probably one of my biggest sellers for Twilight merchandise. Twilight fans don't know customizedgirl.com, so if I just had a banner over there that said, get your stuff at Customized Girl, I probably wouldn't have a lot of clicks on it. But because I have the actual pictures of the merchandise over there, people see something that interests them, and that gets them into the site, and then from there I allow Customized Girl to convert the sale for me. Um, I'm using the square, the 125 over on the left side, and then um, over on the right side, I think a 120 by 600. But there are a number of different standard sizes of banners, but don't th let that limit you. If you have a particular place on your website, um, a responsive affiliate manager will get a banner for you of whatever you want, whether it's particular products in that banner or a certain size of banner or that takes you to a particular landing page. So don't hesitate to contact your affiliate manager and say, hey, I've got this spot that would be perfect for a banner, but I don't see anything that you have that fits this spot. And most of the time, they'll work with you, sometimes even working in your site, maybe your color scheme or your logo or things like that into the banners as well. You can't tell because this is a screenshot, but also the banner on the left side auto updates. And there are a couple of different types of banners. You can either get a static banner, like the one on the right side, what you see is what you get all the time, or you can get the auto updating banners, which can be used, for example, with promotions. Um, if you have a merchant that changes their promotions regularly, you might want to put one of those auto updating banners over there and then just let the merchant do the work for you. Let them change out to whatever the current coupon code is that month, whether it's free shipping or percentage off or whether they rotate in different seasonal banners. Um, a good affiliate manager will also help you figure that out, whether it's a good place to put an auto update banner or a static banner. A word of caution, if you do use the auto update banners, you need to only use it on sites that you're going to touch fairly regularly. If you've got 50 blog sites out there that you're not constantly monitoring, if you're putting things out there for two or three months at a time, you may not want to use that auto update banner because it may change to something if the products that you were selling are no longer offered through that merchant, you may end up with something totally random that you don't want on there. Next, once you get past the the standard banners that are just basically advertising the merchants, then you need to start looking at the specific products. And for bloggers in particular, I think the specific product links work best. And they work best because you can integrate them into your posts. You could take um, a specific product and put it over in a sidebar, but it's not going to have the impact that it would if you put it into your post and actually do a write-up, a review of that product. And the only problem with that is that sometimes through some of the networks, it's harder than others to be able to pull those specific product images. Um, if you're lucky, you can go in and do a search in whatever network you're using and be able to look for that specific product and pull only the image to the network and only the URL to that product so that when someone clicks on that link, they're taken straight to that product. Now, the downside of doing that is if this product sells out, depending on your merchant, it may go to a page that just says, sorry, product not found. You want to look for merchants that instead of just taking to a sorry product not found, there's a sorry product not found. Here are other products that are similar. So maybe if the Twilight um, Bella and Edward dolls are not around, it may take them to a page that says, sorry, we have these other Twilight products, and you may still end up getting a sale out of it. So you need to keep an eye on the individual products that you're putting into your blog as well to make sure that they're fresh if you still want to get sales from old posts. Another option in what I used in this one, how many of you have heard of pop shops? Oh, just a few. For bloggers, pop shops is invaluable. It's a way to not have to mess with the coding, basically, to be able to go into pop shops and create an account. You can then get a plugin that works with WordPress and some of the other platforms. I tend to only use WordPress. Um, you get a plugin so that when you're in your post, you can just hit the pop shops button and say, I want to look for Twilight Edward. And it's going to bring up a list of every Twilight Edward product from the merchants um, that I have added to my account. And then what I can do is just click on the product and it inserts it right there into my post. It's going to insert for me the image of the item, um, sometimes the description, the price, the direct link, and all of those things. So Pop Shops is a great way to be able to insert individual items into your post without having to know a lot of coding. Another great way to use Pop Shops, if, for example, on this site I wanted to set up just a Twilight jewelry site, I may go in and create a Pop Shops shop 
within their system, and then I can just plug that into a page on my site. And so that's going to be auto-updated through Pop Shops, and I'm not going to have to touch that page except for maybe every couple of months just to make sure that I have as many items as I can. And if you use the PHP includes instead of the JavaScript, then you're going to get the SEO benefits of having the descriptions and the titles and all of that showing up within your pages. So that can be pretty significant and something to think about if you do use um, Pop Shops, if you want to go with that PHP includes if you can. All right, how many of you are working with eBay? Not too many at all, all right. Um, with eBay, one of the reasons you may want to work with eBay, if you so choose, is that in addition to having the chance to get paid on the sales for the merchandise, you would also get paid if somebody signs up as a new member of eBay. So you kind of have two different ways that you can make a little bit of money off of the eBay program. I have two different eBay links here. The first one is kind of standard, not so exciting. You know, I've gone into eBay and I've created a link that takes people straight to the keywords for Twilight merchandise. So if they click on that, it's going to bring up, you know, eBay, everything that they've got for Twilight merchandise. The second is where it's happening. This is like one of the best things I ever discovered for my blogs, particularly those that have a lot of pop culture merchandise. Um, this is using a plugin called PHP Bay, which is free. And all you have to do is create your eBay account and then download the PHP Bay plugin. You can do a search for anything that's on eBay. And in one line of code within your blog post, you can just say, I want Twilight merchandise, five items. In this blog post, every time this blog post is refreshed, it will pull from eBay the five um, soonest to expire or soonest to end auction items for the merchandise that I've specified. So I'm getting the benefit of constantly updated items within my posts, and I never have to touch it again. And it's customizable. You can see that the links end up being the same color as my site, so it looks like I've gone out and pulled all these things, said, hey, Twilight fans, look what I found for you. And it looks like I went through the work of finding all these things, when in reality, all that I did was put in one little line of code once I installed that plugin. So um, that's a great way to add extra content to your site. Um, it only works well if you have a lot of merchandise that you can promote, though, that's available on eBay. So you have to have some kind of site where there's a steady stream because you wouldn't want people to come to this site and have it not pull up anything because there isn't anything that's going to be ending soon. So you have to be able to find some good stuff within eBay. And lucky for me, there's Twilight stuff everywhere. Carolyn mentioned widgets. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about widgets because there are so many different kinds and so many different things you can do with them. But suffice to say that most of the time, widgets are going to have to be added into your template. So it's a little bit more advanced in that most of the time, the widgets are not just going to be a plugin added into your WordPress blog. It's going to be something that you're going to have to do a little bit more advanced template editing. But if you're OK with that, widgets are a great way to add extra content. On this particular example, I have an Amazon store that I've put in as a widget. And this will update with Amazon recommendations that I've got in and keyed in into Amazon to create a store. But the added benefit is if they click on my Amazon store recommendations, in addition to just these merchant pieces of merchandise, it then launches my entire Amazon store. And I've got a whole selection of 50 or 75 different items that then I may be able to convince them to buy as well. There are some merchants that have really great widgets for content. Um, one of them that comes to mind is Printable Games A to Z on share sale. They have some great widgets in terms of party planning, where the widgets are basically, you know, for each season they have a different widget, and it might give you party planning tips for Valentine's Day parties, and then has your links to, you know, and by the way, you could print out games as part of your party, and then you've got them right there into Printable Games A to Z. So widgets can be a good way to add extra content to your site while at the same time monetizing it. We could spend the entire afternoon here. and I don't think anybody wants to hear any of the three of us for that long, but we could if we were to talk about all of these different things. Um, each one of these could probably be a session unto itself. In fact, I believe the video one actually is. There are a couple of different options for video. Um, like Car Carolyn was talking before about the share sale option of embedding the video with the links then that go um, directly into the merchant sites. Then there are other types of video that you can get where you are paid on a per impression basis rather than the per sale basis through the traditional affiliate program. Golden Can. Does anyone work with Golden Can? 
Golden Can is wonderful if you have a site that can use coupons and discounts and you don't want to have to pull them yourself. Um, Golden Can is basically free. It's a little complicated, but for the most part, it's going to be free. You're not out anything. You might have a little bit of commission that might come out depending on which merchants you're using. But for the most part, it's free and you don't have to pay to join. And what you do is go into Golden Can, select all of the merchants that you belong to, and put in your network codes. And then Golden Can will generate one line of code for you that you add into your blog page or post. And it generates basically an entire coupon site where it's going to list every one of your merchants that has a coupon, and then when you click on it, it's gonna stay within your site and it's gonna generate within your post and your template, then the list of all of those merchants and all of those coupons all updated on a daily basis. So it's a great addition if you already have a site that you know maybe caters to um, maybe women or people looking to save money or freebies or something like that and you don't want to have to mess with pulling your own coupons all the time. If you just go to Golden Can and get a free account, then you can have this added and have it updated by itself. Um, CPA network ads are a little bit different in terms of being more offer-based for the most part, but that's something to consider. Also, if you have some kind of freebie site, if you want to do some kind of sign-ups through the CPA networks where you're getting maybe coupons or um, discounts, coupons.com, again, is good for money-saving blogs and is kind of a whole entity into itself. And lastly, the CPM. Um, the, the only downside, really, the biggest downside of CPM is you have to have a lot of traffic already. If you don't have a lot of traffic, you're not going to make any money off the CPM. You're going to put, be putting up a lot of ads that may not even be relevant just to try to make money off of those page impressions. So it's mainly the people who already have a really um, active, thriving blog that makes much off of the CPM. Thank you, Tricia. Any questions for Tricia from the blogger standpoint? No? Okay. We will move right along to Kristen. Now, for those of you who haven't spoken at Affiliate Summit, you know, you, you'll, you'll, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody has to have a prep call before their, their panel. And we had a prep call, and I gave everybody an instruction, and I said, give me a quirky little thing to put in your bio. Well. Kristen didn't do it. So, she was up here rapidly trying to write something down. <laughs> and uh, here's what we have. We know that at one time, she was the director of marketing for batteries.com. We know that currently, she is the president and owner of Mad Hatter Consulting, which is an affiliate program management company. But what we learned was that before that, she was a car detailer and car wash girl at an automotive uh, uh, dealership. So what she has kindly offered to do <laughs> as a punishment for not following instructions is whoever asks the best question after her part, she will fly to your house wherever you live and wash and detail your car. <laughs> Just kidding. But she is going to give us some great information about what affiliate managers do and how to work with them. Kristen, come on up. Well, it wasn't so much that I forgot, but I was so busy helping all my affiliates. Come on. <laughs> all righty. So, um, yep, I'm Kristen, uh, owner of Mad Hatter Consulting. We manage lots of affiliate programs. Um, basically, I'm going to give you kind of a breakdown of what an OPM does, but also what a general manager does as well, um, those that have in-house managers. So basically, what a manager's role is, we serve as your contact for your merchant. Um, any questions that you have, anything that you would like to see, changes to the site, something that you think would be better, something that you need, you're going to contact your manager, uh, whether that's their outsource manager or their in-house manager. Um, they're going to be a great resource for you for all your sales information, um, seasonalities, uh, key demographics, any best-selling items, uh, anything really that is going to be pertinent to making your selling ability the best. Um, we're going to also create links for you. We're going to create all your banner links, your text links, uh, video links, um, unique content, anything along those lines. Um, you do, and most networks have the ability to make your own links as well. So if it's something that you want to do yourself, you can. Um, we oftentimes have people say, you know, we need links just for, let's say, Hello Kitty pajamas. We'll go and we will pull all those links for you, save you the time, the effort, and uh, send them straight to you. Um, 
We're also going to be watching commission and tracking, uh, making sure that you're getting paid properly, making sure there aren't any problems with any tracking. Um, if you have a question about it, um, you're going to come to your manager. Um, so also, if for some reason uh, you, you feel that you want to negotiate your commission rate, that's something else that you're going to talk to your manager. You feel like, well, I want to place them higher, but that, this, just, this commission just isn't right for me. That's something that you're going to want to talk to your manager. Or, you know, I'm doing all this great effort. I think I deserve a raise. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we can get done. That's what you're going to want to talk to your manager about. Kristen, let me just clarify one thing for the audience. What she just talked about was the role of a manager not necessarily a manger, as the slide suggests. Does it but really? <laughs> we all know mangers are a little bit different thing. Hmm, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see a couple of examples on here of stuff that, that we put together. We have an a affiliate uh, targeted blog for our manger site. Um, <laughs> So we'll put together pre-coded storefronts of uh, things that we think fit well together. Or we'll put together pre-coded content, you know, for a fight that just happened over the weekend. You know, we'll give you the breakdown if you don't have time to write your own. Um, and then, of course, banner links. Well, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that I wasn't going to be the one to, you know, make ass out of myself. But okay. You spelled your name right, so that's good. <laughs> Do I? You spelled your name right. Yeah, I did. No, you did that slide. I did. <laughs> so I'm an outsource program manager. What you're going to find with outsource program managers is that they're going to manage a lot of affiliate programs. And what's great about outsource program managers is you can go to them, call them, send them an email and say, hey, I've got this site. What do you have that fits? And I'm not going to just say, well, you know, you're specifically targeted at sleepyheads. Let's just do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, you know what? We've got sleepyheads. We've got this site. We've got that site. We've got all these great sites that would fit well with yours. So we're going to offer you the best suggestions on how to market those and implement those into your site so that you can not just take the advantages of one merchant, but multiple merchants. Um, it's important to work closely with your OPM because if, for example, I know you have um, a Twilight site. Let's say I take on a new client that has Twilight merchandise. I'm going to call up Trisha and say, hey, Trisha, I've got some tw uh, Twilight merchant that would be a great fit for your site. So I already know that she's not going to have to go looking around for a new merchant. I'll just be able to tell her flat out that, you know, I've got somebody for you. Um, it's also great in building relationships with your OPM just for exactly that reason. Um, the fact that you can, you know, I know so many affiliates on a personal level. Um, Carolyn was in my wedding. Um, we had another few affiliates that actually attended my wedding. Uh, you know, it's great because not only are you getting a great business relationship out of it, you're developing a lot of really good friends. And of course, you know, friends like to help friends, so we're going to make it as the best working relationship as possible as well. OPMs also have a lot of tools and resources. You know, we're well, really well versed in the industry, so we're going to be able to give you a uh, great heads up on new tools, existing tools, um, anything that's going to help make your guys' life a lot easier. Oh, and that's all for me. So who wants to be victimized? <laughs> I think we all do an overhaul, don't we? Okay. Last so let's see Actually, here. Okay, well, first of all, it, we'll, let's see if we have any questions for Kristen. And I, I didn't give you your, uh, your shirt for asking a, a question there in front. Yeah. Catch? <laughs> Good catch. <Nice>. All right. <laughs> questions for any of the panelists on any of the topics that were addressed thus far? Ashley, can I add one other thing, too? Can you, can I let's, let him, okay. let's let him ask his question, and then we'll uh, jump over to you. Just say your name and your website, and uh, be sure to talk right in the microphone. Uh, my name's uh, John Henshaw. I'm with uh, Raven uh, Internet Marketing Tools. I was uh, curious to know, uh, with, with your affiliate sites, uh, do you, uh, what do you do as far as the FTC's recommendations, and, and how do you, do you just have something in your privacy policy? Do you, uh, do you say this is really a sponsored post? Do you even care? You know, I mean, I, I'm curious to know how you guys go about that? I personally have site-wide disclosure. Um, I know that there are people that do the in-post disclosure with every one of them. I tend to, on my personal blog, I will put usually within the post, I have them a lot more clearly marked on my personal sites because those are kind of my friends and I don't 
feel like spamming them or I don't know, it feels kind of weird with my personal site, but for my sites like By Twilight stuff where it is clearly a merchandise site, it's clearly a site where I'm trying to sell things. I just have one um, Our Disclosure and Sponsorship Policies banner on the side and then a link that explains everything. Thanks, Trisha. Any other comments on that, the FTC topic? Um, I think it's also going to depend a lot on the merchant and the individual affiliate. Uh, we've got a couple merchants that one is not an FDA approved product, one is an FDA approved product. Um, you know, when you get into kind of crossing into FDA and FTC, we need to make sure that we're in really strong compliance. So we're going to push some of our affiliates to be more compliant with that, or at least more obvious with uh, their disclosures. Whereas some of our other products, you know, when they have just a site-wide disclosure, that may just suffice. Um, since it is still kind of a gray area at this point, you know, we at least having something there is a whole lot better than nothing. Carolyn, you had a comment you wanted to make? It was unrelated to the FTC. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we've answered the question, so if you'd like All to right. make the comment, this would be a good time. Um, I just wanted to mention that if you are interested in meeting with any affiliate managers while you're here at um, Affiliate Summit, we actually have um, a directory that contains cell phone numbers for share sale merchants that are in attendance. So you can always just call them up and maybe just sit down over a cup of coffee with them. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is a lot of these merchants really do want to get to know you, so if you call them, it's almost a guarantee for a free lunch. <laughs> so if you need that, just feel free to come up and get one. I wanted to make a comment on something Kristen said uh, a few moments ago, and she was talking about the relationships that, um, that affiliate program managers might have with bloggers and might have with networks, etc. And uh, I want to make it make people understand that uh, even though we're talking about links and and um, tracking and technology and all this stuff when you get right down to it some of the most successful bloggers that there are understand that it's really about relationships in a lot of ways you can always replicate technology and you can always you know build something some new widget that's better than the next one but unless you have good relationships with people in your market and in your industry it's very tough to get traction on promoting those things so events like affiliate summit are fantastic for the networking and make sure you take advantage of that and reaching out to people and um, developing those relationships is pretty critical w would you guys all agree with, with that um, we didn't really talk much about that but you know to reach somebody at a network or at a merchant or a blogger um, don't just send them an email pick up the phone and call them and open that dialogue uh, dialogue take them to lunch um, it's really amazing the difference between people who sit in their little spare bedroom and just try and blog all day and try and generate revenue from it and people who are open and out there networking and out there uh, developing relationships, those were the ones that are really much more successful. I just wanted to highlight that aspect of what you mentioned. So thanks Plus for Plus a great up. way, a great way to like get content on your blog is if you contact your affiliate manager, if you contact a network, if you're interested in getting an interview with whoever started up the site or maybe even you know, getting some kind of blog post from a merchandising manager as to what's really hot or what's selling, mm -hmm. you can do that. They'll actually give you a customized response and that's, that's a blog post right there with uh, custom content. Absolutely. We get requests all the time for top selling products, um, unique content for individual products that are selling well, um, all kinds of things along those lines. What, 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 is, what would fit best for individual sites? Up on this panel, we have some great minds that have been responsible for generating untold millions of dollars in revenue, and uh, the ladies have graciously offered to uh, help anybody who would like to volunteer to have them take a look at your blog and give you some pointers on how you might make more money from it from where it stands now. And are there any volunteers who'd like to have their, wow, that was fast. All right. We've got about, so we're going to actually do this in real time here. Are you going to be nice, Kristen? I'll try. All right, sir. What is your blog address? Hot well, no, One more time. Hockey. <laughs> Excellent. I think Karen will leave on this one. Yeah. Hot dog hockey? Hot dog hockey. Dog I am a huge, huge hockey nut, so I am excited we're doing this one. All right. We actually do have a hockey merchant that's actually attending this show, too. So if you want to meet up, I'll, I'll give you the number afterwards. Okay, click where now? Uh, one RSS. Oh, right there, okay. Who wants to, who wants to, uh, okay, you want to hover around it? 
Yeah. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna let one of you guys take it. Take it. Hmm? Okay, where's so where is the, the content here? When you click on the fourth left hand side and you can click on each one of the posts. Okay. I just click down one page each before. Okay. So there's a post. Okay, so let's let's start with the fact that I couldn't find the blog. Well it's it's right on the left hand side. It's in the first column. First column is replicated from the homepage and the other page. Okay. What is Biotech Laser? So Biotech Laser is an ad you have on there. Is there something that's that's sponsored uh, ad on each individual post? Okay. Each post are myself on the first column or the middle column on the homepage is sponsored by Okay, so that's a local company. They've sponsored the pages. Um, it may not necessarily be relevant to the specific content of the blog post, but they've paid for like run of site advertising across your, your entire site, correct? Okay. Thoughts on that? And they also get one of seven, since it's one every day, they also get one of the seven get blocked out that say status for only nine and nine. I'm have you talking to If you go back to the home page, you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Just go to eHome. Oh, okay. Um, one thing that I think would make this blog post more engaging is you can definitely leave that ad on there if it is specifically sponsored by this local merchant. What I might add to that is, well, we know the Vancouver Olympics are coming up, the Winter Olympics are coming up really soon, and that's going to be hockey season. There's a ton of Olympic merchandise out there where you can put product images on here. Oh, sorry. With the Winter Olympics coming up, um, there's a lot of uh, Olympic related merchandise out there. Hockey is going to be very huge this year, I think, as a sport. Um, and if you put more products, product images up here, your consumers are more likely to click through when you have a, a higher chance of, of earning commission off of this off of this particular blog post. Are most of your readers local to where these local companies are? Uh, pardon me? Are most, most of your readers local or is this more of a national or international audience? Well, I just started it a month ago. So right now, it's all local. That's why I started with sponsored local companies. But uh, my blog, I've only done three in the past month or so. And um, uh, but once I find good affiliate networks that have, you know, related products and services, uh, because it's the internet, I will uh, obviously go to all over North America or who uh, you know whoever liked. And it's not just hockey. That was just the name because there was a m magazine that uh, was the predecessor to this which started out just hockey, but now it's all sports, all levels. If you go to the eHome tab, is your, does your ad update, does it refresh itself with like different ads? In the sidebar, no. no. Yeah, well go to eHome and I'll give you the overview of how the ads work. And this isn't my website, this is the, the network. eHome left hand tab. So I've got three Google spots, the banner across the top, the uh, right there, on the left hand side at the bottom is the skyscraper, and then right there where the Denver is, that's, that's the ads. Those three are all Google AdSense. Um, and then if you go further down the right hand column after the Twitter widget, those are the seven big box ads that are the sponsor of the day, locally paid ads that sponsor either my blog or the middle column, which is the guest posts from which I call the nomenclature is the e-take. So those are guest posts and, uh, and then everything I, I roll out through Twitter and Dig, every post every day. Um, but right now, uh, you know, my individual blog is just on the left hand column. So in the interest of time, let's do this. Um, why don't each of you give, the, uh, give us two things you would do to improve this blog? and then we'll have time for one more um, examination. So, Kristen, can you drop two things that you'd do to improve this blog? Sure, one of the things that I would probably do um, is probably diversify your ads a little bit more um, because you have the Google ads are all three showing the same advertisement. Um, I would probably right. know, change that up a little bit. Well, more. that's why I'm here, to find other networks. So I'll have one sure. for Google, one for something. Right, sure. exactly. Sure. 
Yeah, um, by using some other merchants um, sure. within all the networks, you would definitely. And it, right on there. by the way, of course, just today it's showing the same ad. Often they are three different ones from Google, but of course now when it's being reviewed, but that's fine. <laughs> but that's fine because you know it wouldn't. You may not have pointed that out. So. Um, the suggestion that I would give you um, that relates to your local merchants is a lot of them are probably going to be interested in getting phone call traffic from your site. Um, you might consider speaking uh, with finding out more about the paper call program because then every time somebody calls, you would get paid on that call. Okay, thank you. Good tip. And Tricia? My best tip for you in terms of coming from affiliate to affiliate is when you start looking for the merchants to add to your site, don't just go with the big name ones that you're going to come across first because your commissions are probably going to be lower. Go for the smaller name merchants and you're probably going to be able to negotiate a much better commission with those. Yeah, we actually have face-off fanatics and that would just be a perfect fit for your site. Okay, well on that note then, um, like one of those uh, big box ads is an affiliate system, this uh, hockey shot. Okay. Now, what's your recommendation? Uh, and I just put that on because, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, uh, to go with one merchant slash vendor that has an affiliate program that you can sign up right off their website versus, you know, like your company uh, uh, where you might have this one hockey vendor but a lot of others like that. Should, and I only have so many spots. Do, should I? Actually, what you can do is you can always test it. Google actually has a free, um, what was it called? Google. Google has a free um, testing tool. So what you could do is tell Google, in this spot, I want you to rotate five ads. And then you can actually see which one generates the higher click-through during a certain period of time, and then see which ones actually generate the most amount of money. So I could do that whether it's one uh, merchant or an ad network. But I could say to Google, like my third box down on the right-hand side, flip it between these yeah. three merchants and these two and ad networks. Free. So it's pretty, really? it's pretty okay. phenomenal. I, I'm sorry I don't remember the name right now, but if you grab my card, I'll send it to you when I get, when I get back to the office. Okay. Right. Let's move on to another site who, was, who would, would like to have us take a look at. I saw a hand back here a minute ago. No? Okay. You have a site? Uh, SPENCO.com. -E oh, SB. Thank you. S B E N C. Yeah, uh, small business entrepreneur networking company. So S B E N C O dot com. Okay, so S B E N C O educating entrepreneurs. If we want to take a look at this site. Are you Kurt Taylor? Yes. Okay. Carolyn, you want to take a look at this site? Yeah. My first recommendation, real quick, would be you say that you're um, if I'm a member of the Affiliate Summit Networking, throw in the Affiliate Summit um, affiliate program through Share a Sale right next to it. I signed up for that uh, about uh, four or five days right before, and I just got my approval, so I thought this, this event was too late, but maybe perfect. for the next event, Absolutely, I could be in there. Absolutely, because they'll already be starting to sell pretty soon, so yeah, that would be a perfect place, because Thanks. their banners will say the date of New York and everything on them, so that would be perfect to get up next to that. So you say, I am a member of this, I attend this, and here's the banner for you to click through. I also, like, the Carbonite banner is obviously, that's Commission Junction. Um, I've had a real difficult time getting any action on that, on the banners uh, above. Uh, the sponsor tweets banner I do f fairly good with, but I'm not. I'm also uh, tweeting a lot, uh, and so I can't tell if they're coming through that banner yeah, or if they're I coming through know. your Twitter right. itself. I actually, I have I have two suggestions for you. Um, one of them would be since you are an expert in this field, you could easily do a weekly video where you discuss one key topic. Um, and then you embed that on your site and also have it be a tracked affiliate link. The other suggestion that I would have for you is, again, since you're an expert, you can distribute white papers, um, e-books, essentially, and embedded within those e-books, anytime you click, it would be all, also be an affiliate link that would be related. That's a good idea. Plus, that's viral. So if you send it to somebody, they can keep sending it out. 
And then what I would suggest, I noticed that you have some Google AdSense and some more on the top prominent sections of some of your site, like Trisha was saying earlier, that might be kind of a deterrent for you because they're sending people away to other sites that are going to be similar to you because it's going to feed off the keywords that you have on sure. there. So you want them to stay there and get their information there, not mm -hmm. go somewhere else. <laughs> Are you a member um, of any, are you an affiliate for any domain programs like GoDaddy or Register.com? I, I, uh, I use GoDaddy, uh, the grid hosting program, to host the site. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I do promote that inside the site. Okay, that would be a good one uh, too, well. especially when they're a lot of times running deals, you know, for get your site up and running for $20 or get a domain this month for this price, just if somebody is a small business owner, sure. they need it, they need a site, and if they don't, and a coupon kind of thing mm -hmm. like that or a banner like that might catch their attention. And this site's also done in Joomla, too, and I, I have a section where I really promote the Joomla product and uh, Rocket Themes, which I guess they're selling uh, WordPress now, too, and right. so I WordPress have that in there. But I, I just, uh, my conversion rate on ads is not real strong. Let me, uh, something Carolyn just mentioned, which was something about ebooks uh, sparked an idea. Uh, if, there's a, if you're familiar with a company called ClickBank, uh, ClickBank is an affiliate uh, program mostly for information products like ebooks, recordings, um, things like that. The nice thing about that is that there tend to be very high commissions mm -hmm. for those, 50, 75 percent sometimes. The other thing is that it's really the products that a lot of your customers would be looking for, which is information not necessarily services that are mostly coming to you for you know, how to market my business, how to start a business, et cetera. Is that, is that correct? So you're saying I should make my own product to put in I'm to saying, ClickBank? Well, or? You should make your own product and promote it through ClickBank, and you should become an affiliate through, for ClickBank because they have a lot of uh, information products that your customers would be interested in at very high commission rates. Okay. So I think that's something you should take a look at for, for both sides of the equation. Sounds good. Okay, we have four minutes. We don't have time to do any more evaluations, but we can do some questions. So we've got a question down here. Let me grab the mic. Hang on just a second. Let me. Go Going back to the hot dog hockey blog. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be advantageous at all for him, like during hockey season, to add like an ESPN widget that's in real time for hockey scores? Do you think that would help draw traffic for him? Absolutely, something that's updating like that constantly, and especially ESPN has a store. Especially when it's in real time like that. Right, yeah. Um, keeping it nice and fresh and active on there so people are coming back looking for more creative, not just, you know, your usual ads. And yes, I'll give, oh, she's got a shirt now, so. And we'll get a shirt over here as well. Uh, any last questions? There we go, go ahead. Tricia, yes. you, you mentioned that higher commissions are available from smaller merchants. Can you give me an idea of the range of commissions that can be it negotiated? It totally depends on the merchandise. I mean, you're talking 1% to 2% on electronics and 30 to 40% on magazines. Okay. So it's really going to depend on exactly what types of products you're looking at. It's also going to depend if they're a drop shipper or if they're purchasing the inventory themselves. It really depends on what their margin is. But as, how a much general, willing to as a general rule, the bigger brands tend to be the lower commissions than the smaller brands. Right. There's usually more wiggle room. Uh, again, back to the, the, what I was mentioning with ClickBank, the types of products definitely make a big impact. I work with some uh, merchants that I get 75% commissions because they're zero margin products like information, downloadable ebooks, and that sort of thing. So you can get some really nice commissions that way where it's not an electronic device that has low margins and they're actually physically shipping it. So. Every merchant, every product category is, is different as far as its commission payout. On the lower margin, is there a percentage of their margin that you could expect? Like a third of their margin or that sort of thing? I, I don't think you'll ever really see the, the math behind what you get as far as a the commission. They just set it and you take it or leave it usually until you become a super affiliate and then they'll, you can usually start negotiating higher commissions, but you've got to really show some volume before you can do that. Thank or try to do something outside the box and maybe you don't have a lot of traffic on your site but you're willing to do something different for them like make a video to put up on YouTube for them or doing something different for them besides just writing a blog post or doing search or something. If you're willing to do something totally different that no one else is doing, that in itself may get you a commission increase. All right, if you'll hand the microphone behind, this is our last question. Sure, thank you. My name is Sam. I have a blog but I also have another kind of a website which is in real estate. It's not a blog, I don't type things, but I do advertise properties and that's kind of from what I used to do in the past and still am. Um, I have 
about two months ago, I started putting AdSense ads within the website, and just as a matter of success, I generated a, close to $400 just from one website within the month, and that's just a start. It's a very successful website. It has about 30,000 people a month that come to the website for, for years now. Uh, when I actually applied to the networks, some of the networks, for example, eBay or some other ones, uh, turned around and declined for them to be on there for some reason. And the question is, what do you advise? What is the best? What is it that these networks are looking for, right? From our website, not necessarily blog. I have what is called a Valentine's Day blog, and when I pushed that through, they said, "Sure, you're good." But when I showed them actually the really pumping one, you know, the, the best website around, they said, "No, thank you. We're not interested." What is the best advice? Um, first of all, if a network rejects you, always feel free, to, uh, or if a merchant rejects you from their program, always feel free to go back and ask why. Um, all the networks are, are more likely than not to tell you. One of the things I know that Sherisa looks for is when you apply into our network, we have a very strict procedure to make sure that the IP address um, of your site actually matches uh, your location. We also make sure, we actually dig deep into the who is uh, records to see how long have you owned the site, is your name uh, associated with it. So it, it could be something, something technical. technical rather than mm -hmm. content. Yeah. If it's private registration, I mean, our guys actually will, they'll, they'll check as much as they can. So they might send it back and ask for another question. Oh, another time, if they can't do that, what they'll have you do is they'll send an email to you and say, hey, put this code up on your site and let us know when it's there so we can check it, just to make sure it's yours. Oh, then come to share a sale. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Let's please have a big round of applause for our panelists. As you came in, you were given an evaluation form. Please fill that out and hand it to uh, the lady out there by the door as you leave. If you don't want to take the time to fill it out, please give it to one of these three ladies. They'll fill it out for you and say good things about themselves and turn it in on your behalf. Thank you very much again and have a great affiliate summit. Thank you.